Welcome to worship at Southgate Methodist Church on Good Friday 2021. We're going to start our worship by singing 178, There is a Green Hill Far Away. And so let us pray. Lord Jesus, we come to you on this good friend Friday, remembering how you were tried, convicted, mocked, beaten, and crucified. As we come, we are aware of your spirit moving in and through us. Turn our eyes to the cross. Help us to understand something of your great sacrifice. Help us to understand something of the suffering, the pain that you endured for our sake and for the sake of the whole world. Whilst the whole world should have offered honour and praise, out of love you willingly chose death, dishonour and ridicule to complete God's plan. Holy Spirit, in the silence and in the face of desolation, open our minds to the depth of that sacrifice. Help us to comprehend the grace and the love that kept you on that cross. And then help us to understand that such love was given, that we might be healed, forgiven and welcomed into eternity. Holy Spirit, here at the foot of the cross, we bring our sacrifice of praise. Thank you that we can now walk in the light of your life, hope, truth, freedom and forgiveness. Hear our prayer, for we ask these things in the precious name of Jesus, the Christ. Amen. So we're going to listen to the story that comes from Matthew's Gospel, chapter 27, and Andrew is going to read us that. And so reading from Matthew's Gospel, beginning in chapter 27, beginning at verse 27. The governor's soldiers took Jesus into the praetorium and gathered the whole company of soldiers around him. They stripped him and put a scarlet robe on him and then twisted together a crown of thorns and set it on his head. They put a staff in his right hand. They knelt in front of him and mocked him. Hail, King of the Jews, they said. They spit on him 
and took the staff and struck him on the head again and again. After they had mocked him, they took off the robe and put his own clothes on him. Then they led him away to crucify him. As they were going out, they met a man from Cyrene named Simon, and they forced him to carry the cross. They came to a place called Golgotha, which means place of the skull. They offered Jesus wine to drink mixed with gall. But after tasting it, he refused to drink it. When they had crucified him, they divided up his clothes by casting lots. And sitting down, they kept watch over him. Above his head, they placed a written charge against him. This is Jesus, King of the Jews. Two rebels were crucified with him, one on his right and one on his left. Those who passed by hurled insults at him, shaking their heads and saying, you who are going to destroy the temple and build it again in three days, save yourself. Come down from the cross if you are the Son of God. In the same way, the chief priests, the teachers of the law and the elders mocked him. He saved others, they said, but he cannot save himself. He is the king of Israel. Let him come down from the cross and we will believe in him. He trusts in God. Let God rescue him now if he wants him. For he said, I am the son of God. In the same way, the rebels who were crucified with him also heaped insults on him. From noon until three in the afternoon, darkness came all over Israel. About three in the afternoon, Jesus cried out in a loud voice, Eli, Eli, lema shabachan, which means, my God, my God, why hast thou forsaken me? When some of those standing there heard this, they said, he is calling Elijah. Immediately, one of them ran and got a sponge. He filled it with wine vinegar, put it in a staff, and offered it to Jesus to drink. The rest said, now leave him alone. Let's see if Elijah comes to save him. And when Jesus had cried out again in a loud voice, he gave up his spirit. At that moment, the curtain of the temple was torn in two from top to bottom. The earth shook, the rocks split, and the tombs broke over. The bodies of many holy people who had died there were raised to life. They came out of the tombs after Jesus' resurrection and went into the holy city and appeared to many people. When the centurion and those with him who were guarding Jesus saw the earthquake and all that had happened, they were terrified and exclaimed, Surely this is the Son of God. And so ends our reading from Matthew's Gospel. Thanks be to God for his word to us. Thank you, Andrew for that uh, passage. I was once told by a very well-known preacher uh, of his day that um, on Good Friday, one should pause as preachers and allow the story to sink in. It's one of those occasions where you don't need to have an awful lot of words because the picture of the cross, of the summary of what went on, um, is enough as we are faced by God's incredible love. So no long sermon um, today. Uh, we're actually filming this. It's just gone 11 o'clock at night um, because we've been doing the other uh, services um, as well. So it will not be a long sermon, that I can promise you. But just some thoughts. Those who passed by 
derided him, wagging their heads and saying, you who would destroy the temple and build it in three days, save yourself. If you are the son of God, come down from the cross. Apparently, if you'd asked an average citizen in Jerusalem, who is this Jesus, they might have said, oh, yes, he's the one who intends to destroy the temple and build it again in three days. People always seem to be remembered for the outlandish and incredible things they say, especially if politically or religiously radical. And destroying the temple in Jerusalem was about as radical as you could get. After Jesus was arrested in the Garden of Gethsemane, he was taken to the house of Caiaphas, the high priest, for a preliminary he hearing. And Mark gives us the account. He says this, for many bore false witness against him and their witness did not agree. Some stood up and bore false witness against him saying, we heard him say, I will destroy this temple that is made with hands and in three days I will build another not made with hands. Mark tells us the witnesses against Jesus got their stories crossed and they contradicted each other. Of course they picked all of this up when Jesus had an issue in the temple with the money changers. It comes from John chapter 2. And the people said to him, what sign have you to show us for doing this? And Jesus had said to them, destroy this temple, and in three days I will raise it up. The Jews then said, it's taken 46 years to build this temple, and will you raise it up in three days? But of course he was speaking of the temple of his body. He had been completely misunderstood. It's all about predicting his death and his resurrection. The early church didn't make up such difficult sayings and put them in Jesus' mouth to support their hoax. All Jerusalem knew Jesus had said something about rebuilding the temple in three days. There's no escape. Jesus foresaw and predicted not only his death, which an any ordinary person could do, but also his resurrection, which nobody ordinary could do. It's a supreme irony then that the people at the cross should look on the dying saviour and mock him with their own misunderstanding of his saying. For them it was a boastful claim to earthly power. They were saying, if you have such power, save yourself. But for Jesus, it was a loving statement of his intention to accept the cross, but then to overcome it with resurrection. And when they cry, save yourself, if you have enough power to build this temple in three days, Jesus could have said, I will, in three days, after I've lost myself for your sake. Isn't this what makes us love Jesus? We all know that Jesus had immense power at his disposal, like a bomb casually carried in his back pocket, but not used on his enemies, until he has given all that love can possibly give. Jesus was misunderstood as much as we will ever be. He was treated unjustly as much as we will ever be. His own words were turned into blasphemous mockery, just like many of our good intentions are twisted against us. And what did he do? He took it. He absorbed it. He had an astonishing capacity of receiving blows and not returning them. So take time this Good Friday. Take time to see the brutality. Take time to behold the crushed yet victorious Jesus and allow that picture to strengthen your resolve and your hearts and lay down the things that can be laid down and just allow the Holy Spirit to do he, what he wants to do in your life. There is no rush, nor should there be. Sunday is around the corner, but today it's time to marvel at the love that God has shown to you, it really cannot get any more personal than this. A moment of prayer, let us pray. Jesus, though crucified, is raised from the dead 
and now draws alongside us as we offer prayers to God for the world, for the church, and for all whom Jesus died on the cross. And so we, today we pray for the church of God on this special day, that all who are disciples of Jesus might be given the grace and the strength that they need to walk in the way of the cross, speaking words of love and truth in places of hatred and lies. We pray for God's world on this Good Friday, that the dying Jesus on the cross and the living Jesus of resurrection will draw all people to himself, the source of eternal reconciliation and salvation. We pray for the communities in which we live, work and worship, that bonds of love within families and between friends will be healed where they are broken and strengthened where they are weak. We pray for all those who are experiencing their own Good Friday. Darkness that all... We pray for all of those who are experiencing their own Good Friday darkness, that all who suffer pain of body or mind will be held by the hands of Jesus which bear the marks of his pain and the promise of restoration and resurrection. Heavenly Father, at the foot of the cross on which Jesus died, we offer you these prayers in hope, trusting in your promise to hear us and in your power which raised Jesus from the dead. Let your grace, mercy, love and peace surround us and all of those for whom we have prayed. In the name of your Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. And so we say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. And so we're going to sing hymn number 180, When I Survey the Wondrous Cross.
Well, thank you for joining us on this Good Friday. Of course, uh, Andrew Jacobs will be taking up the story, uh, the continuing story, as we come to Easter Sunday. So that's Sunday, but please join us uh, for that. So to the blessing. Most merciful God, who by the death and resurrection of your Son, Jesus Christ, delivered and saved the world, grant that by faith in him who suffered on the cross, we might triumph in the power of his victory through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who is alive and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. And may the blessing of God, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit remain with you and all those whom you love this day and forevermore. Amen.